Hello, this is Daisy Joy at Adventure Acres, and today I'm going to cover the top 10 things I'd like to accomplish by April 15th. Now, you may be wondering, why April 15th? What's the significance of that deadline? The short answer is that April 15th is my birthday. The slightly longer answer is that April 15th is my 40th birthday. Now, I usually like to set goals with the very clear beginning and ending points of a calendar year. However, since it's mid-September and I have largely been blocked from progress by things like illness and injury, I have felt somewhat discouraged at my progress accomplishing goals and so this offers me a little bit of a deadline extension. The idea of having a little more time to get some things done and actually feel a sense of accomplishment is good for me. So we're gonna go with it. I made the goals, so I get to make the rules, right? All right, so here goes the list. Number one is finish moving in. Now, those of you who have followed my Facebook page may be thinking, moving in, what's the deal? You've been there for like, four and a half years, haven't you? So when we moved to Adventure Acres, because this is a family homestead, there was a bit of a house swap arrangement that was made. Mr. Adventure's mother moved to our old house and we moved here to Adventure Acres. And anybody who's done a house swap can tell you there's a lot of logistics involved when it comes to house swaps. So for about the first six months, my husband would load up the van of boxes, take it over there, go to work, because he commutes near where our old house was. After work, he would go drop off the boxes of my mother-in-law's things, pack up boxes of our things, put them in the van, and bring them back here, where I would work on unpacking them the next day. It was complicated. Unfortunately, about six months after we started moving to Adventure Acres, I got sick and I started having symptoms, which we would later find out were MS exacerbations. Unfortunately, since our attention was diverted to diagnostics, that meant that the moving process kind of came to a halt. And not all of our stuff has been moved over here and not all of her stuff has been moved over there. So I would like to finish the moving process. I've been working somewhat on some of the stuff that we've left over there. And right now I'm working on some of the stuff here, packing it up and going through it and just finalizing the move. The limbo of belongings can be quite chaotic and frustrating. I'm excited about the possibility of that particular chapter coming to a close. I would like to have order restored to my life. <laughs> Number two, set up household management. Now, as I mentioned in the last one, our household is still sort of in a state of limbo. My bedroom area is still mostly boxes of our storage. The basement area is still a lot of boxes of my mother-in-law's storage. And so if we can get number one done, that would mean that number two would be a little easier. I have not really been able to set up a very efficient laundry system in my basement area where my laundry is and I've been kind of stalling out when it comes to setting up order in the household. We've been kind of winging it and so I would like to be able to set up efficient household management plans. Now, number three on the list is missions trip. I am excited. This one is already on the calendar. One month from now, Rose and I will be going to Los Angeles, California to a place called the Dream Center uh, where we will serve as volunteers. And I'm so excited. 
I I should I should hold off because I could do a whole video on this, but I will do a whole video because I'm sure that I'll I'll take some video while I'm there and I'll share with you the exciting things that are gonna happen on this trip. Oh boy, I gotta think about what I'm gonna pack. Number four on the list is spend time with my grandpa. <laughs> now, I've talked about my grandpa before, and I may even have a video or two up uh, about my grandpa, but I am looking forward to this maybe more maybe more than anything else on my list. I, this is like one of my favorite things that I'm looking forward to doing um, because my grandpa is going to turn 90 years old next month and he still lives on his farm and he is so cool. <laughs> I love my grandpa. He's got such amazing stories. I can't even tell you guys. I mean, I plan to. I'm going to try to get him I've already talked to him a little bit about it, but I asked him if he would, I could interview him for my channel here because I think you guys will just love to hear his stories. Little farmer boy considers Great Papa as his bestest friend. And so it's really fun to see them hanging out together because they kind of play off each other in this ornery sort of mischievous, <laughs> ah, fun and playful way. And I just, I love it. It's so fun. I'm looking forward to this. So I, you're going to hear more about this, I'm sure. Number five on my list is make plans with the kids. Now, we have a sort of standing family tradition. The 42 to-do list is a list of 42 things that we want to do with the kids each season. And it has been one of the coolest traditions that we've made in our family because it really keeps us accountable to all those things that sort of pass. You know how time passes so quickly and you get to the end of a season, you know, you get to the end of the summer and you think, oh, there are all these things that I was hoping that we would do and we didn't have a chance to do it. But we start at the beginning of the season, we get a poster board, we write out all 42 things and we draw little pictures on it and then we hang it on the side of our fridge. And then every time we do one of the things on the list, we, we cross it off. And it really, it keeps us so accountable to the, the things that we wanna do and helps us kind of keep on track and not miss out on all those things that come, the special things that come with each season. We haven't really done our 42 to-do list this year. We have fall and winter left to plan for. So we're gonna do it this year. We're gonna plan our seasons. I'm excited about that. Number six on my list is spending some quality time with Gertrude. For those of you who don't know, Gertrude is the name of my sewing machine. So named because she would give me a bit of a fuss when I was first learning how to sew, which is still kind of where I'm at with sewing. Um, but I have all these cool projects that I want to do. And actually I'm sitting by some of them. This is my like sewing area and that's my uh, storage and things. But um, Quilting Time and Dixie, if you haven't checked her out yet, and if you're really interested in sewing or quilting or anything like that, I would highly recommend that you go to Facebook if you have a Facebook account and go follow Quilting Time and Dixie because PJ from that page has been awesome. She she helped me learn how to quilt. So and she knows all the shorthand and she's got really cool um projects that she posts up and she uh did a quilt blocks challenge last year that I was working on and we did we sewed quilt blocks isn't that neat? And um, and so I have about 12 quilt blocks that I have sewn. And so I have all these, you know, all these quilt blocks down here in my basket and they've been sitting there for about a year. And so I want to finish my quilt. I want to work on it. And I'm, I didn't put finish my quilt as my thing on my to-do list because I don't know 
if I'm going to have the time for that and everything else that I need to work on. But I do want to spend more time with my sewing machine. Here's another thing I have here. I found some linen. I looked everywhere for it. I went to all sorts of stores and I couldn't find it anywhere. I was looking for linen specifically because um, I make I bake bread and... I wanted to make linen bread bags so that I didn't don't have to put them into plastic baggies all the time. And so, you know, I have the materials. I just need to actually do the sewing. So I am looking forward to doing some of the projects that I have. I'm going to do a few simple projects, um, maybe some some easy things to sew for Christmas. I want to get this. I want to get Gertrude out and get her humming again. Number seven is create a logo for Adventure Acres and launch the Adventure Acres Homestead homepage. Now, Mr. Adventure has helped me to set up the initial start of my Adventure Acres Homestead homepage. Uh, however, it is still very much in its infancy. You can check it out if you want to, but it's not quite done. I'm still kind of deciding what I want to put on the page. I'd like to include recipes and stories and, you know, kind of as a blog. I'm not entirely sure yet how I want to set it up. And so I'm still working on that. Uh, of course, one of the things that I need to figure out is what kind of a logo I want to have for Adventure Acres. Now, there are a couple of different entities of adventure acres on the internet there's like a corn maze and maybe a kennel or you know there's different places where on the internet that refer to adventure acres i've actually been kind of going back and forth between using adventure acres and adventure acres homestead as far as a logo goes i don't really know what to put in my logo uh, it's kind of hard to sum up the identity of this particular homestead with a logo. I guess this is where you guys could help because I, I could use a little feedback. I don't really know how to convey adventure in a logo. So I'm still kind of working on that. I've got a few doodles in the works that kind of explore different options when it comes to my logo, but I'm still not entirely decided one way or another. I think it would be fun to have Adventure Acres merchandise to share with all y'all. Because <laughs> you, you know that I would be having giveaways all the time if I had merchandise. Be like, anybody want a t-shirt? Okay, number eight on the list is set up a new 10-year plan for the homestead. When I first moved here, I had a very clear vision of what I wanted to do here and what I wanted to have here and how I wanted it set up. And now that I've kind of had a chance to be settled here and, you know, kind of get a, a real feel for the place and also having new information that I have multiple sclerosis and need to kind of adjust my expectations somewhat and also knowing what Mr. Adventure is capable of now that I have seen him in action knowing all these things helps me to make a better plan for the homestead this upcoming spring will have been five years on the homestead and for the most part we're actually pretty on target for our five-year plan now, as part of our five-year plan, the big things were setting up the household, which actually, according to number one, we still need to finish. We also wanted to set up a laying flock. We have a laying flock of both ducks and chickens. We wanted to expand the orchard. We wanted to set up a gardening area with raised beds. We've done a lot of the things that we initially planned in the five-year plan. Now we just kind of have to see where to go from here. Do we go into bigger livestock? Do we expand the gardens more? Do we add more acres to the homestead? It's kind of up in the air. So knowing what we know now and seeing what we've accomplished in these five years, 
will give us a good idea of where we should be in five more years. So we are kind of exploring all of our options and kind of doing some research now and so that we can decide where to go from here. Which brings me to number nine on the list, which is the Adventure Acres interview tour. Now, I am big on research. When I used to work at a newspaper, I, that was one of my favorite parts of the job, finding information out and learning things about things. I love that sort of stuff. And finally, number 10 on the list is to publish a book. Now, I realize that may seem a bit like overreaching because it's a little over six months from now, this particular deadline. And also, I've just given you a whole list of other things that I would like to do in that six months. So <laughs> that seems like a big bite to chew. Except that I have started a few books already and actually have quite a lot of material and many pages already written. So it could be doable. I'm a published writer already. I have written for newspapers and I have done freelance writing. So it's not a matter of not having the skills to write. It's more the question of whether I can access those skills. Because unfortunately, multiple sclerosis has been kind of ornery in keeping me from doing things that I want to do. And writing is no exception to that. It's been difficult because the connection in my brain that goes from thought to verbalization has been, have been, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. The connections have been compromised when it comes to verbalizing thoughts. And the connections have been compromised when it comes to handwriting thoughts. And so far, I've had limited, it, it, it's had an, a it's had a limited effect so far on being able to type my thoughts though. And so even when I could barely speak a sentence without mistake, I could still type and I could still write and writing has given me a voice. It's hard because I feel like writing when I'm when I've typed something out and I've written it and I've typed it out that that is the truest version of myself and it's a little intimidating to just to think that I may discover that that has been compromised too. Really, I've sort of been shying away from writing because of that. But, you know, I've always wanted to write a book. Ever since I was a little kid, I, would, I thought it would be cool to write a book. I have ideas for books and I have materials already written. One of my books is already 70 pages long. It probably wouldn't take that much to finish it. The question is, you know, is my skill level now going to match what I've written before? And I, you know, I'm, I'm a little nervous about finishing it. Uh, well, I'm at the place where I'm just ready to say, okay, I'm done looking back at the things that I haven't done and feeling intimidated. And I am just going to run with it and I'm going to have fun with it. And I'm going to, I'm going to publish it. And then if anybody buys it, that would be great. If not, then I will have done it 
and I will have felt great about it. <laughs> and when it comes to writing a book, it's not that I have any ambitions of it ever being popular or making tons of money. It's just that I want to be able to express my thoughts on paper and have it bound up in this tidy little thing that you know, to me is sort of a form of art. Like the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. And I like to think of that in reverse, that sometimes a thousand words can paint a picture. I would not be good at writing cliff notes. <laughs> I think it would be great fun to have to finish a book and have it published, maybe have a publishing party on my birthday. I don't know, but I think that would be great fun. And um, so those are the top 10 things that I would like to try to accomplish by April 15th. So there they are. So how about you? Are there any goals that you have? Any big plans that you want to accomplish before your next birthday? Go ahead and share in the comments below. And click subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. This is Daisy, signing off for now.